In this video, I want to talk about an idea which is commonplace within the autonomous agents and multi-agent systems community, but which people outside this community are often uncomfortable with or don't really understand terribly well. So I want to explain what this idea is and to try and justify it. And the idea is talking about computer processes, agents, as if they have mental state, as if they have cognitive state. Uh, and the idea is the following. When we talk about the behaviour of agents in the real world, people like you or me, uh, we use statements like the following. Janine took her umbrella because she believed it was raining and she wanted to stay dry. So what we're doing in this sentence here is we're taking an agent, Janine, and we're attributing to her beliefs and desires. We're attributing these beliefs and desires because we're not saying that these things actually exist, but it makes sense for us to talk about Janine as if she has these beliefs and desires. We never had any formal training in these kinds of statements, but most of us seem to be familiar with and comfortable with them. Okay? And because we never had any formal training, this isn't a formal thing, we call this folk psychology, the idea of predicting and explaining the behaviour of rational agents in the real world by attributing to them beliefs and desires and then assuming that they're going to act rationally to try to accomplish their desires given that they have these beliefs. And this idea of talking about agents in terms of mental states like beliefs and desires was called the intentional stance by uh, Daniel Dennett. And he, he's a philosopher who coined the term intentional system to describe entities whose behaviour can be predicted by the method of attributing beliefs, desires and rational acumen, as we did with that statement about Janine on the previous slide. And he talks about different grades of intentional systems. So here's a quote from Daniel Dennett. A first order intentional system has beliefs and desires, but it, does, it has no beliefs and desires about beliefs and desires. A second order intentional system, in contrast, is more sophisticated. It has beliefs and desires, and no doubt other intentional states like fears and wants, about beliefs and desires, and other intentional states, both those of its others and of its own. So a first order intentional system has beliefs and desires, but it doesn't have beliefs and desires about beliefs and desires. A second order intentional system has beliefs and desires about the beliefs and desires of itself and of others. So that's the notion of an intentional system. Now, uh, we're going to be talking about computer processes as if they have these mental states. So we have to justify that in some sense. We have to look at whether or not it's legitimate or useful to talk about machines as if they have mental states. And John McCarthy, one of the key figures in AI research, uh, came up with the following quote to talk about this idea. To ascribe beliefs, free will, intentions, consciousness, abilities or wants to a machine is legitimate when such an ascription expresses the same information about this machine that it expresses about a person. It's useful when it helps us to understand the structure of the machine, its past or future behaviour, or how to repair or improve it. It's perhaps never logically required, even for humans, but expressing reasonably briefly what is actually known about the state of the machine in a particular situation may, may require mental qualities or qualities isomorphic to them. Theories of belief, knowledge and wanting can be constructed for machines in a simpler setting than for humans and later applied to humans. Description of mental qualities is most straightforward for machines of known structure, such as thermostats and computer operating systems, but it's most useful when it's applied to entities whose structure is incompletely known. So let's try and take apart what he's saying here. So the first thing he's saying is that this ascribing beliefs and desires and so on to machines or computer processes is legitimate when it expresses the same information about a machine that it expresses about a person which gives us a kind of test for whether or not uh, something has, for example, a desire to stay dry. If, if something has a desire to stay dry, then we expect it to act so as to stay dry. So if it believes it's going to rain, we expect it to take an umbrella or to take some action to keep it, it dry. So it's legitimate when it expresses the same information about a machine that it expresses about a person. If a robot, if we say a robot wants to stay dry, then we expect it to act so as to try and stay dry. 
It's useful when it helps us to understand the structure of the machine, its past or future behaviour, or how to repair or improve it. So if it helps us to predict the behaviour of a computer process, if it allows us to predict the behaviour of a computer process without knowing anything about how that computer process is actually operating, so where the structure is incompletely known, then it's being useful. Okay? It's useful when it allows us to predict its behaviour even when we don't have any knowledge of the actual program itself. It's never logically required, even for humans. Well, what McCarthy's saying here is that there are multiple possible descriptions of the behaviour of a system. We don't need the intentional stance. We can use other descriptions. For example, ultimately, people like you and I, we're just a bunch of atoms. We can appeal to some lower level physical description of what's going on in order to uh, uh, describe and predict our behaviour. But, as McCarthy says, expressing reasonably briefly what is actually known about the state of a machine may require mental qualities or qualities isomorphic to them. So, when you try and understand what a computer is doing, it's very natural to use language like uh, the computer wants you to type in your password. The computer doesn't know where you want to put this file. Well, we intuitively talk about the computer as if it has desires to find out things from us or doesn't know things about us. And the point there is there is an alternative explanation. We can appeal to the description of a computer in terms of ones and zeros and its circuits and so on, but expressing reasonably briefly about the, the behaviour of a computer in this kind of setting, expressing reasonably briefly, is not going to be done with such a description. So here, the mental state description seems to be uh, 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 much more useful. Um, so what can be described? What kinds of machine can be described by the intentional stance? Well, even very simple machines. Here's a quote from uh, Yo Shoen. So Yo Shoen says, consider a light switch. It's perfectly coherent to treat a light switch as a very cooperative agent with the capability of transmitting current at will, who invariably transmits current when it believes we want it transmitted and not otherwise. Flicking the switch is simply our way of communicating our desires. So here we're talking about a light switch as if it is an agent. But is that a useful thing to do? Well, most adults would think that description is, is extremely silly. Why? Because it doesn't buy us anything, as Sherwin points out. We essentially understand the mechanism in terms of the sort of even very naive understandings of physics and current that's being transmitted sufficiently to have a simpler mechanistic description of its behaviour. And understanding a light switch in terms of current is in many ways more useful than this kind of uh, intentional stance description because it allows us to predict that if we spill water on the light switch we'll get an electric shock. So, the more we know about a system, typically, the less we need these intentional stance descriptions. But, so the less we know about them, the more useful these intentional stance descriptions are. And with computers, there are extremely complicated artifacts appealing to physical descriptions or design level descriptions of the behaviour of a computer just becomes uh, too much to handle. So here, the intentional stance can be a useful abstraction tool. It doesn't require us to know about how the circuitry of the computer works. It just lets us talk about the behaviour of this entity as if it was a rational agent. It has some beliefs, it has some desires, so we predict it will, tr it will behave to try to accomplish its desires given that it, look it thinks the world looks like its beliefs. We don't need to know about the low-level construction, the circuits, the ones and zeros in memory. It's an abstraction tool. And computer science is all about abstraction tools.